later on with this tire, then I'm done. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to tell you two quick stories. I'm going to tell you a story going. I'm going to tell you two quick stories. Because everything's been made right. I did the car races on a Saturday night. Friday night. I go to car races every week. Every week I go to car races. It's my thing. I love car races. And I'm in the car races on Friday night, and middle of the show, I get up and I go home. Nine o'clock, beautiful night, good car count, fast track. I get up and go home. I don't know why. I'm sad as I leave the, the, the grandstand. I don't know why I'm going home. I walk into my house, and Pat says, What the heck are you doing here? She's starting to see me. I said, I don't know. I think I'll just sit and watch TV tonight. I was sad because my passion for racing seemed to be a thing. And I sat and turned on the TV and it was 9 o'clock on Friday night and 2020 was coming on. ABC, Barbara Walker, the new dance. And the first little vignette that came on, they usually did three little stories, and the first one that came on called The Gift of Life. And it showed a helicopter flying over the jungles of Vietnam. And it was a story about a, an emergency room trauma specialist. And they were doing a book on emergency room trauma and they asked this Dr. Swan, what was your worst trauma case that you ever tended to? And he began to recount when he was a young surgeon at the 71st Medivac Hospital in Lake Vietnam on September 21st, 1968. And they brought in a soldier who was so gravely wounded that the consensus was to medicate him, set him aside, declare him expectant, and let him die. His little legs were blown off. He had shrapnel the size of your thumb in the middle of his head, and his eyes were gone. His arms were terribly mangled. I sat there and I started to shake. And uh, Dr. Swan described this kid vividly, and the guy who was doing the story said, well, I, you know, the consensus was the medic came and said, aside, you can't expect to let him die, but Dr. Swan operated on him to save him. And uh, they said, well, how did it turn out? You know, what you save him for? Did you save him for a life that means something, or did you save him for a life of terror? And Dr. Swan had no idea. And so they set about to find him. It took him two years. His name's Ken McGeary. He lived in Columbus, Georgia. And they started telling his story. And Ken was a door gunner on a helicopter, a man helicopter trying to drop firefighting equipment. Him from him down in the jungle on September 21st, 1968, when our army PT car came out of the car and blew his helicopter out of the sky. And I sat in that sofa and I went to pieces. Pat came over and she sat down and she held on me. She said, What's the matter with this man? I said, I think this is my kid. I think this is my nightmare. And books. You know, and they talked about he suffers from PTSD, he sleeps with guns, he's violent, but he's married, got married since Vietnam. He has no legs, not stumps. He doesn't even have stumps, he sits on a scalpel. He has no eyes in his head. He's not partially blind, he has no eyes in his head. They had to do a craniotomy and take the top of his head. They had to put one arm back on backwards. And so he sits like, like this. With one arm behind him, one arm in front, like Humpty Dumpty. Because he sits on his tailbone, he doesn't have anything. But he can only feel with two fingers. Two fingers. No legs, blind, he can feel with two fingers. And he met a woman talking on a CB radio, and they got married and had two kids. And he sails and he scooped the eyes, and he's a hell of a guy. But he suffers hard with post traumatic stress. And he can't get home from Vietnam. And he doesn't know what happened to him. And he still does this DD Dow stuff. And he goes off on people and the police are at his house a lot because he uses weapons and things. And I thought, well, maybe I can help him. You know, I was looking right at him. And so I reached out to Kenny. And they didn't believe that I was who I said, but I could prove it because I was decorated by the commander of that helicopter that day when I told him it was Colonel John Yarbrough that decorated me and he knew that it was myself and another kid that saved him that day. That started a relationship between Kenny and I. And uh, when I done my horse deck, I told my sponsor I'd do anything except go back to Vietnam. And he said, well, when it's time, you will. Well, when I met Kenny, it was time. And Kenny drove me back to Vietnam, so I was trying to drag him on. And he was killing me. He was killing me. But long story short, because I'm running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny got so
I spoke at the Georgia State Convention a few years ago. I got to this point. I said, How long have you been sober, Kenny? And out of the audience, I was forced from the wheelchair. Oh, about 10 years? Yeah. He was an amazing guy. Amazing guy. They're going to make a story about his life. HBO's doing a movie. <gasps>